or something like that. Yeah. And um, now I'm really happy that you agreed to do another one. Um, I have to remember what I said now. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't, uh, you don't need to. Um, first question is obviously about uh, ongoing festivals. Um, did you enjoy the tour up to now or is it, um, how is it like to be on tour again? Um, it's, I think the band um, are agreed that it's probably our favourite run of festival so far. Mm -hmm. The five that we've done. Um, because the songs that we're playing are just much more fun. Mm -hmm. In the past when we've done festivals, we've usually gone into them thinking the only way we can win the audience over is by playing well-known songs. And, um, it doesn't, it's just never really worked, I mm -hmm. don't think. So this time we decided we'll play just songs that we want to play. And so you, you play a um, very big variety of, of albums and, and, and of songs, yeah. Yeah, I mean we played them um, at yesterday's one we played 24 or 5 songs and we're playing about 23 or 24 tonight mm -hmm. and there'll only be two the same as yesterday. Oh. So it's, so it's going um, to be... Well I'm trying to push the group you see so we'll be doing different songs mm -hmm. for every festival. It's like um, it's quite difficult for me to remember the words to someone. But, uh, <laughs> It just makes it more enjoyable, you know. Mm -hmm. If we were going, if we were doing them and we were playing the same songs, it becomes a bit of a routine. But this mm -hmm. way, no one really knows what we're going to play until like an hour before the show, so it's a bit more exciting. Yeah. Routine is, good, is a good catchword. Um, this week, the Rolling Stones celebrated their 14th birthday of being on stage. Does something like that um, makes you a little <coughs> bit afraid of what's what's going on in the future? It well, makes me feel young. <laughs> and good. Um, no, I honestly, I, I stake my life on the fact that I won't really celebrate 40 years with the Cure. Mm -hmm. um, but it's our 25th anniversary coming up um, at the start of next year, and we plan to do something special for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the release of the next album and your solo will, will be connected with it, or? Um, I think that I think that my probably my solo album will be attached to the next Cure album. In some way. But not attached to the uh, anniversary? No, no, the new stuff is um, it's really, it's very different, it's really different to, to um, it sort of follows on from Bloodflowers, but um, it's, I don't know what it is really, it's kind of like heavy rock at the moment, so. Uh, no, I think we're, we're doing kind of two lots of things with, with the um, anniversary stuff, Polydor, um, have agreed to release all the B-sides, mm -hmm. so we'll probably be doing some promotion and some shows around that, but um, the new stuff will be completely separate. I was hoping that it would be before, but it looks like it'll probably be after, so we'll probably do like, April and May will be back catalogue stuff, and then probably June will be new stuff. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, um, but how, how is it like to be um, part of an institution which lasts now for 25 years? Um, it's better than being in an institution. <laughs> Um, at times it's the same. But, um, uh, it, I don't. I never really see it like that because when I'm doing this with the band, I just feel it's just like an extension of, of who I am, really. And I think it's probably different for me than it is for the others in certain respects because I've never felt of it like a job. I don't kind of have to be there. I don't have to do it. I, I choose to do it. You know? It's yeah. like, and then I ask the others if they want to join me. So. It's, um, I've never kind of had to do anything that I've never really wanted to. So I don't feel like it's a, a, you know, a thing that I can't mm -hmm. get rid of. The cure just exists when I want it to, so. Yeah. Um, I, enjoy, I really do enjoy it. It's like, I can't think of anything else I'd rather do. And I've had a lot, of, I've thought long no. and hard about it. And it's, um, I, I, there are things, I mean, that I now do that outside of the group that I never used to do. I kind of have more of a, um, I suppose a life outside of the group that I used to have, mm -hmm. but I can't at the moment see why I would not want to be in the cure. Mm -hmm. um, you said it's you, pure you, alcohol coming out. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you said um, you have done different things apart from the cure. Um, once you, you've done with the cure, um, some something like um, more this welfare aspect. You, you um, gave out uh, and treat for free and then um, s s parts of the, of the sellings of the albums connected with Entreat went to a um, welfare 
organization, I think Mancap was called. Yeah. Are you still um, involved in something like that? Um, from time to time we do things like that. We did um, a thing on the Wild Moose Swing so we did a thing called Lost, uh, what was it called, Five Swing Live. That was for the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. We did Lost Wishes for the children's charity near where I live. It's not a big deal really. We could do a lot more. Um, it's, um, do you feel in any way um, that you have to do something like that? Because no, of well, it, no, on a personal level, I, I mean, I do, I, I do a certain amount that make, just makes me feel comfortable with how much money I earn. But um, that's just my upbringing. I feel guilty. I have, you know, it's, it's a terrible thing, really. Um, but I think with with the band, s sometimes I feel if we we're doing something particularly like a like on Tree or Five Swing Live, that I probably think like most fans would have got a bootleg. Mm -hmm. So they really aren't that in need of a live album. So mm -hmm. maybe if we present something which is probably better sounding than a bootleg and it's well played and it's kind of you know it's got a nice bit of packaging and it's limited edition, we don't really need to earn money from it. But I need to kind of it's I suppose it helps if I think if we charge money for it and the money goes to a good cause then it makes sense, everybody mm -hmm. wins. So we get a version of the songs out that we think is representative of how we play. Mm -hmm. You know, which is well all the time. <laughs> and um Fans don't feel like they're having to buy something to be, you know, to complete their collection. It's like, yeah. um, but it's not um, not one thing you, you do mainly because you feel responsible for uh, social social um, problems. Or no, something. as a group, we've always been very um, very wary of, of, of committing ourselves to, to um, causes or charities. Mm -hmm. It's just something that does, something about it. Apart from anything. Two of the five of us actually fundamentally disagree with charity on a philosophical level. They don't think it's right. They feel that um, that their taxes should be more efficiently used, and there shouldn't be any need for charities. So I'm not one of those two. I actually think that um, charities are a good outlet for, for people who have got yeah. enough money. But um, a charity shouldn't really need to exist. But the fact is, it does. You know, I, I don't. I think that um, people will often forget, like when we did, for example, Wild Mood Swings, that Jason. Had never been in a successful band. He'd actually like he was living in a one-bedroom flat. You don't join the Cure and suddenly become really, yeah. you know, rich and famous. It's like, I mean, I'm probably the only one that's earned a lot of money out of the band. I mean, Simon has, but he's spent it all. <laughs> um, so yeah, what apart from that, as a person, you 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 think is important for you? Um. Well, I mean, I suppose moving on from, from, from that, I think that what, what I've tried to do with The Cure is, is to always have a certain integrity about how we do things. So it's not necessarily that we're seen to be doing good, it's that the way that we go about doing things isn't seen to be kind of trying to do something we don't want to do. And to me, it's like that's the most important part of what we do, it's so that people who like the band will never feel let down. So fans of the band will never have to feel worried that we'll do something that they'll be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. That's that is like the most important thing for me. And that's why I see like the cure I try and make it it's like an extension of who I am. And that is because of my upbringing. I think that there are certain things that you should do and certain things you shouldn't do. And it's um you know I'm, at the same time I don't think that we should we're role models and I don't think we ever have been. But I think that we kind of proved that you can be successful by doing things that you really believe in. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it a certain way. So it's I suppose that's the um, the thing that I've got out of the cure. Apart from like the experience of singing and everything else that goes with it, which is probably more fun than the, the righteous stuff. Are you um, sometimes con do you sometimes have a conflict with people around you that perhaps have an um, yeah. yeah this opinion you sh you should be in a certain role or um, yeah should should have a certain image should um, do do special things. Um, I've pretty much been in conflict with everyone around me ever since I started, to be honest. Like the people, um, whether it be record company people or even people in the band, think that I could have at many points in, in what I've done, I've just, um, for want of a better way of putting it, just actually become more commercial, which is quite humorous to me because we've, we were an incredibly success, successful pop band in the 80s. Yeah. We were really commercial from like 80. Three to about 87. That's all we did was pop music. Yeah, you sold 27 million. <laughs> yeah, I think I slightly exaggerated because I certainly hadn't got the money from them all. If that's how many we sold, it's um. But yeah, we sold millions of records, but I, I, over a period of time, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of the music that we've made 
hasn't really been. I mean, for, as an example, when we did um, the Kiss Me album, when we did the, the singles from that, like Why Can't Be You and stuff, the logical thing to do is to capitalise on that. And we and what we chose to do is disintegration, which when it came out, people were saying isn't that isn't commercially successful, and yet became even more successful. And then we did the same with Wish, and that was even more successful again. Um, so no one has ever really understood how we've been successful. And I, th and I honestly believe it's because of how we do things. I think it's primarily it's the music. If you don't mm -hmm. write good music, or if you don't play music that people want to hear, then you haven't got a chance anyway. It doesn't matter what you think or what you do or say. Um, but within that, it, is, it goes back to like, uh, our audience is a really kind of um, loyal audience, and it sort of renews itself. Mm -hmm. We attract a certain kind of person, and that's purely because of the kind of group that we are. So, I mean, I, I know that a lot of our hardcore fans hate us doing the singles, you know, <laughs> with a passion. Um, it just so happens that over the last kind of five years, I agree with them. That's why we haven't played many singles. And, mm -hmm. you know, on the Blood Flowers tour, we played very few singles. Um, I don't really feel comfortable anymore. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we're doing three singles tonight. <laughs> Oh, three of uh, three out of twenty-two. Mm. Not, not Possibly for. Oh, no, I think we no, we do. We might be doing. Um, try and cut here tonight for the first time. But. Good. So um, again, a, a little bit of a step back. Um, you said something about the future sound of of the Cure. Can you imagine to do um, totally different sound? Because you said uh, the next songs have, will be different. We have though. I mean, through the years, we, we, we've we've tried an awful lot of different styles of music. You know, it's like the obvious ones being Love Cats, and you know, we've done like electro pop and things. Mm, enough. Yeah. But whenever I sing, it sounds like The Cure. I mean, we've done demos of stuff where I don't sing that you'd never know it's The Cure. It's like unless we play a particular type of music with a particular array of instruments, you know, then I know there is a sort of there is a definitive cure sound, I suppose. But even within that, there's probably not just one definitive cure sound. Like the cure that played 17 seconds is a very particular sound of its time. You know, it's like it sounds like the cure. But there's um there's also a sound around the time of um, disintegration, which is a very sort of cure-like sound. I think that like this band, doing your own has got a very particular cure like sound as well. It's like it's different again. Yeah. But the thing is, whenever I sing, it just sounds like the cure. That's what people mean when they say we always sound the same. It's like, but people, well in but, England. But that's also what, what people want from you, so. Well, the thing is, in, I suppose a lot of the, the criticism, most of the criticism we get actually, 90% of the criticism we ever get comes from the English media. Mm. Um, and it's not really to do with the music, it's to do with me. Um, and so, Essentially, the people in, in England see the cure and they see me. It's like, and so they hear the cure and they hear my voice. And it, that doesn't really happen everywhere else in the world. I think there's, there is actually more of a sense that the cure is a band. You know? I mean, to fans, Simon's as important as I am. Yeah. It's like, um, and I know that, you know, and the band knows that. But um, the English media doesn't know that. They wouldn't even know who Simon was. So it's, um, it's, I don't know. It doesn't really bother me actually. It used to. But okay. He's, he's showing all these signs. We have to stop. The oh, another couple of questions. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, another couple of questions. I might stop sweating. Keep talking. Two more questions. Three more. Questions. Three more questions. Yeah. Good. So, um, yeah, we, we talked a little bit about the person of Robert Smith. Um, obviously, the, the fans are very much interested in the person. Um, I. How um, how much would you give away from you to to them? Um, I, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that fans would really want me to be like a normal person. I don't think they'd want to know very much about me. I actually don't believe that because. But, 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 to give you an example, right, when I was young, I really like admired David Bowie. He was kind of like my, the only living person that I thought was really good. And um, the first time I met him when, in the mid-90s, I was really, really upset because I was sort of talked to him for a couple of hours and, and we didn't get on. We just disagreed about almost everything, about art and about you know the way the world turns. Um, and I went away from that and I felt kind of like that was my idol, you know. And I was so wrong. What I imagined he would be like, it was nothing like it. Um, and I think that's true of anyone, really, that if you, you find out that you know people have feet of clay. So it's like I, 
I do something which is unusual from time to time I do you know and, and my life is kind of unusual because I don't have to work because what I enjoy doing is actually my job um, and going on stage and singing to people is a kind of a unique experience and yeah. the reason why I still do it is because I can't get that anywhere else you know it's like it's something that I re would really miss but but 90% of my life is incredibly dull it really is it's just like like everyone's life is mm. you know the, the myth that people have exciting lives is just that, it's a myth. I mean, there's, there's no such thing, isn't it? I mean, you can only kind of do so much, mm. and then you, like, you fall over and you die. You know? So it's like, there's... Um, I mean, Love this rock star. Well, no, I mean, what's exciting to me would not be exciting to other people. You know, the fact that I can sit and I'll read a book in like four or five hours, that's not exciting, mm. you know. But at, for those four or five hours, I'm completely engrossed, and I find it like the fact that I can do that any time of the day or night, and no one can tell me you've got to get up for work or something. Is for me is the best thing about my life. But um, that's not really, it's not interesting. I don't, you know, I don't rock climb or I'm not trained to be an astronaut or anything. The only thing I do that is noteworthy is actually the, what I do with the Cure. The rest of it is really, but apart from that, I like to keep it private because I'm with someone who completely hates what I do. Hates the publicity. And Mary's completely against what I do. So she likes the music, but she thinks the rest of it is absolutely rubbish. <laughs> but then she's probably the only person in the world that actually knows who, who I am. But perhaps you need some some sort of um, grounding. I, I, it's definitely the, the only thing that's kept, kept me um, from becoming unbearable. Uh, I'm not unbearable at times, but from actually, I suppose, living out the life that people would like me to. Mm. And I live much more normal life than I think people could imagine. Mm. And okay. very modestly, actually. It's kind of strange. People are usually very, when they come, they find out where I live and they come and visit, I think they're quite shocked at how normal it is. It's a really normal neighbourhood, it's a normal house, you know. It's like, people want me to be in like a gothic castle or something, but one day I'll move. <laughs> okay.